Um, you have a talk about uh, where you mostly talk about uh, uh, stream, the stream API and uh, Lambda I expressions for different versions. Is that, is that what? Um that's uh, that's semi-true. Um, so my talk is, in my talk, I will be going through different versions of Java, uh, different curiosities, quirks that happened all along, along the way, and show how to deal with those things. Okay. And in most cases, how to deal with those things is to simply migrate to newer versions of, of Java. I see. So, so, so for people who are still using, do you have also use case of, uh, for Java 8? Uh, so the thing is, when, when I hear people discussing new Java releases, Java mm -hmm. 8 was very big, uh, very beefy, because people wanted to try lambdas and a lot of stuff happened there. Uh, but once Java 9, Java 10, Java 11 got announced, there was not that much excitement involved about the uh, uh, modularity, local variable type inference, and so on. Um, so at some point, actually, I've even seen like comparisons. Compa people were comparing Java community to what happened in the new Python, where two camps got formed, you know, the Java 8 and Java 9 and after. Um, the point being is that many people think that they don't want to migrate beyond Java 8 because it's not needed, because they don't want modularity, they don't want some other stuff. But actually it's not just about modularity, yes, right? Yes, I would say that it most people won't ever use modularity. Right. But people that don't migrate further, they miss an opportunity uh, to leverage all those small things that usually were held by those big bank features. That would, you know, in Java 8, that would be lambdas. In, J in Java 9, that would be modularity. Um, Java 5, uh, generics, mm -hmm. or something like that. And those big features, they, they delay the uh, release of a version. But now with the uh, cadence-based release cycle, all those small things, they, 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 make the they go out anyway. And Java 12, that was released yesterday, is a great mm -hmm. example of that. If you go through the... Uh, for all list of JEPs that were introduced, it's like five of them, plus small API changes. But there is a huge chance that even if you don't need any of this, there is still some small bug or at, or at least documentation improvement somewhere on the side that can make your life easier. Okay, so give us like examples of that. Um, as one of the examples, actually this is not included in my talk, Okay. but if you try to stream a file if you want to take a file and stream it li in, uh, line per line, uh, I, see this, I see this problem all the time, especially when recruiting uh, to Casomo. Um, we, have, we, have, we always start with the first stage, which is a short refactoring task. And we include some imperative code in there, and many people, they like immediately spot, spot the idea. Wow, I can use stream API for that. So they go for files lines method, which is supposed to stream the file. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, at the beginning, they complain that there is no resource management, that there is leakage. But the same happened with files lines. It's not very clear from the documentation that you need to explicitly close the stream after using it. I see. It, it wasn't the case, I think, believe, till JDK 9, where the short note appeared ex in the documentation. This needs explicit closure. And this is a huge change. Okay, small thing, but makes our life easier. Another um, improvement um, that, you, that I can think of is the change how Flatmap gets evaluated. This wasn't very clear. Um, in Scala and in other languages, you can expect a stream Flatmap or uh, Flatmap on most monadic types to be evaluated lazily, especially for lazy, uh, lazy sequences. And this wasn't the case for Java. So imagine if you had a stream of one element and you flat mapped it with an infinite stream and then l reached out only for the one element using find any, that would never complete. Because, well, the flat map, uh, the in this nested stream would be evaluated eag eagerly for forever. And many people, if, if you don't, I mean, you don't often flat map the infinite streams, uh, but but this is a quite common operation to actually do. And the problem is that you might be discovering, you might have performance impact in your applications. Mm -hmm. And this is something that will immediately get better if you just migrate beyond JDK 10, I think. It was fixed in JDK 10. I see. 
So how did you um, how did you find all those mistakes? I mean, is it like you you run into them and eventually? Um, um, I mean, uh, how, how did you... F that might be correlated to my lack of personal life. Uh, <laughs> but let's <laughs> putting that aside. Um, yes, um, I do trainings from Java 8. Uh, people ask questions, so I, I need to know. I, I need to right. explore different possibilities to be able to answer that. And uh, this is mostly how, how you run into this. But um. basically, you take all the those releases and then you test them, right? So uh, is that something mm. that you recommend? Uh, I to yes, do? I usually I pay a lot of attention to new releases. I mm. explore APIs. I look for changes. But I wouldn't say that I take every release and I just go through all classes to see if every method behaves uh, as as, okay. as it would in the past. That 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 would be like overstatement a bit. Okay. Um, but yes, I'm always trying to see it. Uh, especially recently, I'm paying attention to those small changes in APIs that are happening. For example, now Java Java 12 got a few m yeah, new more methods for string string API. String, not stream. Okay, you got uh, keeping aside the methods from the constants API. There you got string transform and string. I forgot, but but still, it's interesting to okay. see the new things that that make it. So you, I'm, I'm trying to find something that we could uh, tell our audience, um, you know, take those little steps, um, uh, test certain things. So it's good that you mentioned like uh, testing the new improvements and making sure like uh, uh, how they work, right? How they behave. So I'm um, afraid I it's very easy because I mean it's, it's very hard to figure out right. what actually changes. Right. There, there is no algorithm well for that. Well, there is one, very naive you know, to just go through everything in all right. possible situations and uh, trust them and then discover. But this is not very optimal, right. I wouldn't say. Um, so... But at least you have like a code, like when you work on projects, for example, you make sure that your project works, even if you don't um, move to that, uh, to that release, you at least test it. So you see how your code behave, or is that... Uh, this um, is... Um, fair to say? This is, yes, this is very a very good thing to do especially now if you have those small releases because well it's not obligatory to move be to migrate for between minor releases you can you can stay with the i think the mark Rein called, called called it to take a blue pill and just stay for uh for <laughs> three years on a long-term release but naturally it will be much easier to migrate if you just test it along the way every mm -hmm. six months with the new release it's much easier to take a few smaller steps than one big one Imagine right. just migrating from Java 5 to Java 9. That's, right. that's not fun. Right. But it's much easier to migrate from Java 8 to Java 9. Cool. Uh, I know you have a blog as well. So um, w what do you write about? Yes, my blog is for comprehension. And actually what I write about is often very related to, um, to what we are talking about. Because I, besides I various ideas, for, for example, for functional programming or interesting things from JVM languages, I also write about curiosities and new stuff that happens in Java. So if you probably don't uh, want to just every six months manually explore the whole standard library of Java, probably you, you can just look at my blog and you should be able to discover some of them. Ah, I will yes. do this for you. Okay, Ex excellent. He tested for you. So You're welcome. That's the <laughs> cool. Um, anything else you want to add or share? Um, so be, um, be s besides uh, functional changes, there are a lot of changes making happening to the virtual machine itself. Oh so yes. So even if you don't need local variable type inference, or constants API, or the Shenandoah GC, mm -hmm. there is a still huge chance that even if you migrate from to the newer version, your application might get faster. It might not be a very significant change, but it might start faster. It might be a little bit faster. Which, well, which yeah. matters at the end of the day. At least in our business where we, well, we handle around 500, uh, in during peak times, at now we handle around 500 uh, monetary transactions per second. And we need to worry about this at some point. Right. It can impact actually uh, your cloud also, how much you pay uh, for the cloud. Right? Yes. So that's a big deal. Although we are kind of forced by regulations to keep everything on premise. Oh, I see. Okay, so you don't have that. Uh, yes, that I issue. mean, the regulators are not very... Um, uh, regulators already accepted virtualization and Docker, but they, they are very... 
not yet comfortable wi with the cloud. So we, we have all the big computer in the basement. That works. <laughs> Anything else? Are you writing a book? No, you're not writing no. a book. No. I'm not thinking yet. about. I will do this ah. at some point, but not yet. Okay, cool. Well, um, I always uh, tweet about your content. So, at Java tweets about um, yes, Gregor's content. So, you can find, if you, um, if you have never seen his content, you can find it there. Thank, thank you. you.